Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you aboard. Joining me right now is the one and the only Lionel. Needs no introduction beyond that. Hello, sir. How are you, my dear friend? Boy, we do go way back, don't we? Very 20, it might be 25-ish years, I'm trying to think. Yeah. Close to that. W WABC. WABC, indeed. And who would have thought 25 years ago, Lionel, that we'd be sitting here talking about President Donald Trump and, uh, and, and, and the things that surround that presidency? And I want to start with the media. I'm sorry. I've never seen anything like it in my entire life I, you, if, if I really want to get aggravated, if I wake up feeling so good that I can't take it and I really want to get aggravated, I put on the CNNs, the MSNBCs, and my blood pressure in about 30 seconds is through the roof, and that's where it stays all day. Well, that's your uh, problem because you're watching <laughs> that. You know, Steve, look, you and I go back when we used to say that uh, the media was either, uh, for, for the most part, you know, left or liberal or whatever and, and and frankly the ideologies may not necessarily be something that we or you or anybody might agree with but they dealt with an ideology anti-war pro uh, lower uh, tax whatever it, it, it made sense today that has been hijacked by a group of people who are basically saying I'm left I'm gonna call myself left or progressive but I basically alt left and anti-Trump I stand for nothing other than being against Trump. I don't care about issues. Even the Women's March, Women's March, whatever that catastrophe was, women wearing obscene hats and <laughs> yeah. gorged foam rubber, Fudenda walking around. If you ask it, what was your what was your message? I don't know, other than this this event. So it's not even the left. It's just a kind of like a mob. This this scrum, this anti. Trump scrum that is ideology-less or right. vacant. Right. And, and here's the thing, Lionel. I had Larry Sabato on, uh, on yesterday, and uh, he's, he's done some great polling on all this, um, in addition to finding out that 20 percent of Trump voters once voted for Obama. But when it comes to the media, he says all this negative media coverage is really going over the head of the public. CNN's own poll, and this is buried and they don't talk about it, but in their poll that showed a 42 percent uh, approval rate or 43 the other day, uh, they, they, they show that 54 percent say, yeah, the country's doing good. 54%, which means <laughs> that the media is failing miserably. They didn't get it during the right. election, and they still just don't get it. Not only that, Steve, they don't, you know, it's funny how they, how they, uh, the, and when we say, I think we're talking about, and I call me alt-left, uh, and let, let's call it too, fake news media, because what Trump did, which was so great, was he took that term fake news, which was originally uh, targeted, towards or against him he took it kind of like when you disarm somebody and then hold them at bay with their weapon he says no no you're fake news so they're the alt left fake news not only do they do that but it permeates everything why is it that there is not enough coverage or anything that is off limits when it comes to uh, uh reporting on fox news legal problems but yet nothing about new york times and cnn involving widespread civil rights violations in essence not just an incident and i'm not trying to belittle anything but not an isolated incident here and there of of albeit incorrect sexual uh, predation or what have you but systematic racism at at the 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 the, the, the hallowed bastion of, of progressive ideology for shame yeah, I mean, you watch Simone Sanders, no relation to Bernie, who she was the chief spokesperson for. She's black. On CNN, not too long ago, she said, we don't need white people running the Democratic Party. And, and, and she's on every day talking about racial issues, sitting in judgment of Donald Trump on racial issues. It's, it's almost, you know, so it's bizarre a world, just about. Well, you know, another thing, too, is I, I find interesting as well. And by the way, I'm not necessarily signing on to everything that Trump does. Oh, I, I know I'm you. I, I know that. Everything. I'm not. I mean, I mean, I don't like. I I don't like some of the stuff that Sessions is saying. But but let me just bring this up. We are we are 
a wash in censorship from every faction there is to it. Ann Coulter, like her or not, whatever, I don't care. It's Ann Coulter. I don't want to diminish her, but it's like, it's Ann Coulter, not the leader of Iran or whatever. It's Ann Coulter. So she wants to go to Berkeley. So basically they shut her down, which by the way, will inure to her benefit in terms of the promotion because she's now even more lauded and spoken about. So actually she's wink, wink, loving the attention as I understand. But Berkeley, this, this epicenter, Steve, this, this bastion of free speech of the 60s says no. At the same time, we have Sessions going after Julian Assange and others and Mike Pompeo talking about leveling espionage charges. Now, whether you like it or not, those that, that type of reportage gave us Watergate, Milai, others as well. So all I'm saying is we have left, right, middle, we love censorship. Not only that, Steve, I'm going to shut you down because you're a conspiracy theorist. You practice fake news. You're a racist. You're a sexist. You're a homophobe. You're an Islamophobe. You hate s s kittens. You're an Islamophobe. You're, I mean, we love to tell people, shut up. Don't march. Don't talk. Don't speak. Nothing. But, but that's more prevalent on the left as far as the hating and the shutting down. And it's because, I believe, they're more organized. L look what they did to Bill O'Reilly. Look, look how fat you put on the TV or you looked online and you saw how many sponsors dropped when that story broke most recently. And first it was a couple. An hour later it was 10. Then it was 12. Then it was, I mean, look, I was a victim of this in the 90s at WABC, where there was literally, I believe, four, two or three, maybe four would be a lot of people sitting around a table trying to get me pushed off the air, you know, writing letters, making phone calls, threatening boycotts, threatening pickets, and they're, they're sitting in their basement in their underwear. But they're more organized now, and they got Bill O'Reilly canned. I'm not $25 million, we should all be canned like that. But I mean, they got him canned. The left is good at that. The right, I'm not saying they even want to do it, but I think Turnabout is fair play, and I'd like to see the right get more organized. Maybe go after the sponsors that go after O'Reilly and say, wait a minute, if you're going to go after him and, get, and kick him off the air, we're not going to shop at your store. You know, a couple of things on that. First, uh, one of the reasons why, and nobody talks about this, but one of the reasons I think that what precipitated Bill's uh, ultimate ouster was this pending Sky deal that 21st Century Fox, right. whatever happened, because right. that really pushed them over that, because you know and I know that the, the, the advertisers didn't leave, they just kind of went off his show for a while, and then they're gonna come back and whatever. But you are correct about that, in that they are organized. Now, Steve, wouldn't it have been even better for them to have used all of that organizational wherewithal to help Hillary Clinton get elected? She could have used that instead of abandoning her campaign. So they are they are very good at, at, at speaking up. But you also speak to something very, very important, and that's through the, the cowardice, the absolute feckless impuissance of, of people in, in the media or in, the, in the, the Madison Avenue world who don't even push back. Are, are they really, I mean, do they really think that the people who are watching Bill O'Reilly are somehow going to turn against Mercedes Benz or whatever it is because of something Bill O'Reilly said? I mean, seriously? Or are they just doing it because out of cowardice and they don't want to, they just want to move along and not even think about it? I know. Either way, though, it is, uh, it, it's frightening, I think, what we saw with uh, happened to Bill O'Reilly and um, uh, Gloria Allred's daughter, whose name escapes me. I'm not happy with what Jesse Waters Lisa said. Lisa Bloom. I know. I'm, yeah, Lisa Bloom. I'm not happy with what Jesse Waters said, and now he's on vacation. I, I hope it works out for him. Uh, but However, Lisa Bloom's sitting there and saying, maybe you should be next. You know, in other words, like she's the great decider of who will keep their jobs and who will, you know, have to go away in shame. That's, that's scary stuff. Listen, Lisa Bloom <laughs> is a, a very media savvy, along with her, her mother, and has done, I'm sure her law firm is going to do great. She is going to be, for this particular cause of action, what I think um, Core Boy and the Trio are for people who are bounced in the United States. David Dow, they represented. Anybody who is bounced from you know, airlines, you're going to say, I want that guy. 
look, Steve, you and I have been in it long enough to understand how this thing works. We understand that what we're seeing right now is something that we have never seen before. We have right now, I mean, think about it. Going back to Reagan, going back to Bush. Yeah, there was a negative, there was a concerted media effort, but this is unrelenting, relentless from every avenue, every, every newspaper, magazine, comedian, actor, actress, musical group, name it without a doubt. It is just mind boggling. This, this rabid anti-Trump sentiment. And, and, and the sad part is that if he does something, and by the way, we are looking at the specter theoretically of war. We are looking at very serious considerations with Iran and North Korea and everything else. In the meantime, we're not covering that because, or they're not covering it because if the president does something good, something that may ward off impending certain war, if he something that beneficial to us all, their disinclination to report is going to keep them from reporting the truth. Yep. And that's fake news. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, Lionel, I hope this is the first of many to be continued. Just tell anybody anything you want to plug. Tell people how they could watch you, where they could watch you, where they could see you, your YouTube channel, whatever. You can follow me on LionelMedia.com. I have a YouTube channel, uh, Lionel Nation, on YouTube. And Twitter is uh, at Lionel Media. And Steve, my good friend, all the best to you. You are one of the best. And well, I mean that sincerely. I appreciate that, my friend. We will talk again. The one and only Lionel, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, sir.